Holy crap, it's Sonic. Well, after one of the longest waits we've had in the series yet, it's here. Overall, even though we haven't gotten a mainline game until later in the year, it has been a pretty active year for Sonic. With tons of collaborations, some questionable remakes, the Sonic movie got a very successful sequel, and we even have a Netflix show coming next month. So with all of this attention being put back on Sonic, there was a lot of pressure for his new mainline game to hold up all of the attention he has been given. After the last mainline Sonic game, many fans were left very disappointed, so this game had a lot riding on it, as many fans had been getting tired of all the mediocrity we have been getting the past few years. So the question is, does this game live up to the 5 year wait? Is this game going to give Sonic fans both new and old an experience they can enjoy? Well, it's a little complicated. You see, this game has a lot of issues, and I mean a lot of issues. Like the cyberspace levels with bad controls, bland level themes, and reused level layouts. The fact that the last two islands of the game are just asset flips of the first one and the many 2D sections in Chaos Island that completely interrupt whatever you're trying to do, just to name a few. But yet, I very quickly dumped 20 hours by trying to 100% each island, maxing out all of my stats, and even catching all of the fish in the fishing minigame. And I think I even want to do it again. So if this game has so many problems, then why do I like it so much? Stockholm Syndrome. So the first thing I want to talk about is the story, which unlike the last few games, isn't terrible. While it isn't the most incredible thing in the world, and I still have a fair share of problems with it, it's still a major step up from what we have been getting. So the game starts off with Sonic, Tails, and Amy going to investigate a mysterious place the Chaos Emeralds had traveled to. Their plane gets sucked into cyberspace, which kicks off the rest of the game. After escaping cyberspace, Sonic hears a mysterious voice telling him to tear down the walls between dimensions, and I'm sure this character only has the best intentions. So this game's whole story follows a very formulaic structure. Sonic starts on an island, frees his friends from the strange cages, gets the Chaos Emeralds, fights these giant enemies called Titans, and then moves on to the next island. After freeing your friends, they are still stuck as a sort of weird digital ghost, and you can have interactions with them throughout your time on whichever island they are on. I enjoyed these parts of the games as they finally make these characters feel like themselves again. Instead of just being one-note characters that don't do anything like in any of the post-colors games, we actually get to see these characters' personalities shine again. I'm a pretty big fan of Knuckles, so seeing him actually care about the Master Emerald again, and his friendly rivalry with Sonic actually being shown for the first time in years is really nice to see. I feel like for the last decade, the writers thought that Sonic was supposed to be the funny, silly guy who never takes anything seriously and says funny things like Baldy McNose Hair and Green Hill more like Sandhill. But in this game, he actually feels like himself again, which makes the story much more enjoyable. There's also a new character in the game named Sage. She was an AI created by Eggman to take over the technology of the islands, and she has an interesting story to say the least. So the whole idea with her character was to give her a father-daughter relationship with Eggman, which while kind of weird, isn't a bad idea. We don't see many character arcs for Eggman, so I think that this could have been really interesting. But the problem is that in all of their cutscenes together, they never really push that idea. While it is mentioned a few times, it's never really expanded upon. That is unless you play the fishing mini game with you know who. You see, there are these collectibles called egg memos, which are locked behind coins you get from the fishing mini game. And within these memos, we get to see Eggman begin to grow an attachment to Sage. Which, like I said, is a very interesting direction to take his character, but most people playing the game won't go out of their way to get these, and even if you do, this story beat still doesn't feel the most developed. Which sucks, as it does play a pretty big role in the end, which we will get to later on into the video. So the final aspect of the story are the Ancients, which at first was definitely the part that interested me the most, as we see many cutscenes of this strange force completely wiping them out, which is very interesting to see and makes you naturally curious of what happened to them. We even find out in the Egg Memos that they are ancestors of Chaos, which is a really nice touch. We later find out that the Ancients and the Chaos Emeralds themselves actually come from another planet that was destroyed by the same strange force that wiped them out on this planet. I think that while this part of the story is very interesting, it also feels a little underdeveloped, especially once we get to the end, which, like I said earlier, we will get into later. 
overall, while not my favorite Sonic story, I think this one definitely gets the job done, and I can say that I was definitely engaged the whole time. So before we get into the main part of the game with the open zone, I want to first talk about the cyberspace levels. For most people, this was the part of the game that had people the most concerned, and I can say with full confidence that they were completely right. Yeah, so overall this part of the game can feel pretty rough. Starting with the actual theming of the levels themselves, these are some of the most boring looking Sonic levels to date. There are only four different level themes, and I only found one of them at least somewhat interesting. The first three themes are Green Hill, Chemical Plant, and Sky Sanctuary, and I think I can speak for everyone when I say that if I see Green Hill one more time, I am going to lose it. Same goes for Chemical Plant, we have seen that level so many times at this point. Sky Sanctuary not as much because it doesn't return as often, but it's still annoying to have this instead of an original level. All three of these levels very obviously reuse assets from generations, and the levels still somehow look worse here than they did in the game from 11 years ago. I will say that while not super original, I sort of like the city themed levels. They have the most interesting looking levels and enemies out of the bunch. I also really like the backgrounds in these levels. It's these infinite roads that curve in all sorts of weird ways, and does the best job of conveying the fact that this place is a digital database, and not just a lame reuse of old textures. And as far as the level design and layouts go, well those are reused as well! Well from what I can tell, not all of them are old level designs, but all the good ones are. But the problem with the best levels in the games being from other games is that the games these levels are from simply do them better. There are a few SA2 levels copied into this game, and whenever I play them, I would just rather be playing SA2. Whenever I play a Generations level in this game, I just feel sad because this is just so lame. But one of the biggest problems with cyberspace is the controls. You see, in the main game, you can adjust the feel of Sonic to your liking, so he controls just how you want, and I adore this feature. But in cyberspace, you can no longer do this. You are stuck with the controls that Sonic Team masterfully crafted for years on end to be some of the worst feeling Sonic movements in the series. But hey, at least it's better than Forces! <laughs> It's really weird, because I feel like the controls feel perfect in the open world, and very precise, but in cyberspace, they just feel so much worse overall. It is extremely hard to turn in the air, which can make certain sections much more annoying. The turning just feels very slow in general, and the level designs don't really accommodate for this. There are also a lot of fully 2D levels, which can get a little annoying at times, but 2D or 3D, these levels just aren't really that good. I know that this review has seemed very negative so far, but that's mostly because I wanted to go ahead and get that stuff out of the way, because I think that the rest of this game is really good. So first thing I want to talk about is the controls in the open zone. In contrast to cyberspace, the controls here feel amazing. A lot of the regular moves that Sonic has have been moved around to different buttons, like boost now being on the right trigger, and the homing attack now being on a separate button than the jump button. All of these changes were in the cyberspace levels, but they are a little more important here. This is because in the open zone you have a lot more options of moves that you can pull off, which is why a lot of the older moves had to be remapped. I do really like that the homing attack is no longer on the same button as jump or boost like the games before Frontiers, because it allows you to move around and double jump easier without getting locked onto an enemy and accidentally homing attacking it. We also get the addition of the Psy Loop, which you can use to attack enemies, generate more rings, or solve puzzles, and it feels really good to pull off. It sounds really broken that you can just generate rings, and it is, but when you are in more tense situations, it can be harder to pull off, so the difficulty is still there. They also added the drop dash in this game, which you can pull off by pressing the jump button three times, and while it isn't always super useful, there are still plenty of spots in the game where you can get some really good speed from using it. There is also the addition of the new combat system, and while it is not the deepest system in the world, I still had a lot of fun with it. You slowly unlock more and more moves that you can pull off, and it feels really good to chain them together for combos. And one of the biggest additions to the game are the sliders. These allow you to adjust how fast Sonic can go, how fast he turns, how far he can get launched in the air, and a bunch of other stuff. I think that this is a great addition, as it allows you to get Sonic to feel just how you want him to. But my philosophy is that if your sliders aren't all the way up, you're a loser. But in all seriousness, I think that this is great for beginners who may want to move a little slower, and I'm glad that the option is there. So while all of that is great, if there's no content or things to do, the controls don't matter. In my opinion, the game delivers on this with there being plenty to do. There are tons of mini platforming sections throughout each of the worlds that usually reward you with tokens that you can use to talk to some of your friends. There are way more of these than you need, but I still enjoy just running around and finding one of these to quickly do some platforming and then continue on my way. 
One complaint that I do have about these parts are the ones on Chaos Island that constantly shift your view to 2D that will just randomly do it while you're running around on the island and it locks you in the view and it can get pretty annoying at times. There are also a bunch of fairly simple puzzles that you can solve to unlock more of the map and I think that these are fine. Also on some of the islands there are large structures that basically have whole levels on them for you to run through and in all honesty these are way better than the cyberspace levels. Speaking of cyberspace levels, those are spread out throughout each of the islands and while I'm not the biggest fan of these levels, I think that they work well in the context that you're just running through them quickly a few times and then returning back to the main game. I think as long as you don't linger on them for too long, the cyberspace levels aren't terrible and act as small challenges to go along with the other stuff in the world. But now onto one of my favorite parts of the game, the mini bosses. I genuinely think that the mini bosses are one of the most fun parts of the game, as most of them aren't just simple fights where you punch them a few times and be done with it. Each of these bosses has different ways you have to approach them and take them down. Each mini boss is so unique that I never really got bored of them and had so much fun seeing what they would throw my way. One of my favorites has to be the sumo where you have to bounce off the walls and hit them a bunch of times. It just feels so good to pull off. Now the reason you do all of these things is for the end goal of getting all of the chaos emeralds on the island so that you can progress through the story and then lose them again. But your reward for getting all of them on an island is the big boss at the end. There are four of these. Only three of them are really that good, but we will get into that later. And while these bosses aren't very difficult, you don't care because they are insane. Sonic will turn supersonic, the game turns on heavy metal rock music, and then you have some of the most cinematic fights in the whole series. Like I said, these fights are not very hard, but they look so cool and the music is so good that you don't really care, and I love it. These are by far the most memorable moments in the game, and I very much enjoyed them. Alright, guess it's time to talk about the ending. So after completing the first three islands, Sonic is in a weak state as he has absorbed a lot of cyber corruption in the process of trying to save his friends. This leads to a really cool section where you are climbing these towers that have some really cool platforming sections, while some extremely dramatic music plays in the background. You climb the towers because the strange voice that is most certainly not evil is telling you that this is the last step in tearing down the walls between dimensions. So after doing this, surprise surprise, the voice ends up being the evil being that wiped out all of the ancients, and you have just released them. Sonic gets overtaken by the corruption, but it doesn't really matter because they fix it in the exact same cutscene, and you move on to the final island. This island is basically just Kronos Island 2, so not much to say about it. Kinda disappointing though. Maybe instead of just immediately fixing Sonic's problem, maybe the last island could have taken place inside of his head and everything could have been all glitchy and cool, and there would have been more of an excuse to reuse assets, but oh well. So after gathering the Chaos Emeralds for the fourth time, you fight the final Titan boss, and it's just not as cool as the other ones. There's nothing necessarily wrong with it, it just sort of lacks the impact the other ones had. But hey, this isn't the final final boss. Because if you were playing the game on hard mode, you got the secret true final boss and it's just a big rock. So after beating the last titan, the evil whatever that killed the ancients goes to space and turns into a rock called The End. Sage takes over the titan and you go off to fight it. The game then turns into Galaga. Yeah, so this part really caught me off guard and not really in the good way. I mean, with just how cool the other bosses are, this is just lame. So after shooting a rock for a while, Sage sacrifices herself to kill the rock, Eggman mourns the loss of his daughter that most people didn't even know he cared about, and Sonic leaves the island with his friends and never acknowledges Sage's death or even seems to care about it at all, even though he has been trying to be her friend the whole game. But then we have the secret post credit scene where Eggman plays Mario Teaches Typing, and the game then does my least favorite cliché ever and reveals that the character that gave the emotional sacrifice is actually still alive because that would make me sad if they died. They also confirm that Styx the Badger from Sonic Boom is canon now. Really happy for all you Styx fans. So while I didn't really enjoy the ending and some other parts of the game, I still overall really enjoyed myself with this game and I am so happy to say that. After we've been getting these mediocre games for so long now, it's nice to see Sonic Team finally step up and make something that most fans will enjoy. While the game still has major flaws like cyberspace and the fact that you can clearly tell they had to cut some corners after the third island, I can overlook that because this game does one thing the series has been struggling to do for a while now. Be fun. This game is just simple fun that I can see myself going back to for years to come and I can't describe how much I appreciate that. And even more, this game shows me that Sonic Team does care and that as of now, Sonic's future is looking brighter than ever.